American Horror Story represents Dante's Inferno. Meaning each season is a different circle of hell. Limbo. Fraud. Treachery. Greed. Gluttony. Anger. Heresy. Violence. Or lust. All the stew is stew! That looks pretty damn violent to me. I think that's gluttony. What do you guys think? Let's talk about it right now on Fan Theories. Hey guys, I'm Chastity and welcome to Hell. I mean Fan Theories on GameSpot Universe, the new show where we talk about our favorite and craziest fan theories that we've found on the internet about the movies and TV shows that we all love. And we want to hear about your favorite fan theories, so drop those in the comments below. And by now, you know that we have two huge fans of American Horror Story here Hello. who just love making videos and love dressing the same and not texting other hosts about dressing the same. I I'm don't sorry. know why I missed the memo, know. but... Uh, yeah, we planned this. Sweater. Okay. It's our AHS look. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyway, American Horror Story. <laughs> so let's talk about it. You guys have a favorite theory that you've been wanting to dig into. Mm -hmm. So let's get to it. Yeah, this one's been around for a long time. So it's not like we're breaking news here. No. This is the American Horror Story is Dante's Inferno theory. Um, oh. It's been around since like 2014. But we've touched on it before. Yes, we and have. We just love talking about it. Yeah, we talked about it in our uh, what was it? Our breakdown of every single like see how they all compare to each other. Yeah, we did it in that one. But um, this is the first time we actually just sat down, talked about, it, and broke down each and every circle. So well, I don't know. I believe this theory. I'm just gonna say that I, I kind of go with this theory a little bit. Plus, we always love finding ways to incorporate Stu is Stu into these videos. Oh, the Stu is Stu. So why not make another <laughs> yeah, video? Yeah. Wait, what's what's do? <laughs> what's do? I'm just kidding. Well, we have to say first that Ryan Murphy actually acknowledged the theory hmm. um, back in 2017 as well in an Instagram interesting. post. Interesting. He just said interesting. Yep. So he's not saying that it's you know 100 yeah. real. Sounds like he likes the theory. But that he likes it. Mm -hmm. So that's why we should spend you know the next few minutes talking about it. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. Or he hadn't given it much thought, and he's like, "That's great. I'm, yeah. We're going with it. Yeah. What's left?" That'll be next. All right, so we're talking about Dante's Inferno. Let's start with Dante first. Yes. So, I don't know this. I'm just gonna read it. So Dante's Divine Comedy covered the Inferno and outlined the nine circles of hell. And the Inferno tells the journey of Dante through hell, guided by the ancient Roman poet Virgil. So in that poem, hell is depicted as the nine concentric circles of torment located within the earth. He must pass through hell and purgatory to finally reach heaven. Right, so the, mm -hmm. the idea is that every season of American Horror Story is one of those circles, mm -hmm. yep. and that eventually, we, we will come to a heaven. Yes. <laughs> Which is hard to believe after watching the show. <laughs> I can see it in the final frame, the last oh. like four frames. Like just a quick hint, hint, there it is. Right. Close out, end of show. And the interesting thing about every season is that physically, everyone's kind of confined to one setting, right? Mm -hmm. You have like the murder house, you have the asylum, you have Miss Robichaux's academy, you have an outpost, you have a, a hotel. Freak show, you have a hotel, yeah. you have all these these physical locations that kind of confine the actors into their specific roles. So basically every season there's, you know, one specific circle that they're constantly stuck in. Mm -hmm. All right, let's start off with Murder House. And with Murder House, we're gonna go with Limbo, which is what Brian Murphy used in the Instagram post too for this one. And it sums it up pretty well, actually. Come on. That's pretty clear. That, yes. That's super yeah. obvious. But yeah, it, it matches one to one too. Right, yeah. if you die in the murder house, your spirit is literally trapped in, in there limbo. in a mm -hmm. state of limbo and you cannot move on to the afterlife and you're just like stuck there forever. Unless someone digs up your bones and takes them somewhere else. <laughs> which we but, realized yeah. found out in, <laughs> which we found the latest out. <laughs> Yeah, sure. It took a few years for people to realize that, but oh well. I finally knew. <laughs> but there's a lot of bones in there, so you're gonna be there forever trying yeah. to do this. And then at some point, some one of the ghosts is gonna stop you, so. And then you're stuck there as well. Mm -hmm. Now moving over to Asylum, that is Fraud, which is the eighth mm -hmm. circle of hell. And um, this one's pretty much a no-brainer as well. Uh, the entire asylum is built on one big lie. Lies. Lies. People are committed to the asylum under false pretenses. Mm -hmm. Like they're not really sick and they're mm -mm. trying to treat them for something that they don't even have. Dr. Arden's crazy experiments. That's all it is. It's, yes. You may think my mind is closed, doctor, but my eyes are wide open, I promise you. Do you hear me? And then we have Coven, one of my favorite seasons, yep. and that is Treachery, which is the ninth circle of hell. And so mm. this is 
pretty clear. There's just backstabbing on backstabbing on backstabbing through this entire season. Like everyone's cutting throats, slitting yeah, throats, even throats. betraying your own kind. Mm-hmm. You know, witches uh, attacking witches in order to get to the top to become supreme. Yeah. Fiona mm-hmm. is just the example. <laughs> the main example. <laughs> the main example. Yeah, and husband backstabbing his own wife Cordelia. basically yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah now freak show that's greed the fourth circle of hell greed is good the point is ladies and gentlemen that greed for lack of a better word is good sorry i have to put a gordon gecko line in there i'm sorry i'm uh, sorry and that deals with elsa and her greed and how she treats the performers in the freak show and how she just takes advantage of them and at the very end she just sells them off yeah, all their physical characteristics are turned into a money-making venture for mm-hmm. her and for others. And then even Stanley, who's like a con artist, you know, he's trying to literally kill people in order to make money off of them. Let me explain to you. If your corpse were half as valuable as Ma Petite, you'd be soaking in formaldehyde right now. Luckily for you, your dead body isn't worth anything. Then we have Hotel, season five, and that is gluttony, which is the third circle of hell, I believe. So gluttons are punished for overindulgence. So things like pleasures and vices galore, which is all over this season. You just see it everywhere. It always reminds me of the movie Seven. Yeah. Oh, of course. What's in the box? Me, 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 me. Like whenever I think of gluttony. Uh, mm. which is oh. terrifying. Mm. Um, but yeah, they're literally, uh, the Countess, everything that she does, there's blood-sucking vampires in there. There are- uh, High fashion. High fashion, mm. drug addicts, uh, sex orgies. There's an addiction demon, literally, that's created there in, in, in the hotel. So uh, yeah, gluttony, everyone's kind of overindulging in all of these vices. Now let's move on to Roanoke. Anger, the fifth circle of hell. Uh, now, everyone's f-ing angry in this season. I mean, everyone. It doesn't matter what it is. Are you angry, Greg? <laughs> yes. But let's start off with the first person who's angry here. The point A, which is the butcher. Right. <laughs> and she's really leads the drive for the entire season, and her anger just stems off to everyone else in that season. And I'm the only one, I think, who likes Roanoke, by the way. I, I know that's... Uh, I'm sure hey, you're not on. alone. It, it, it'll grow on you. It's crazy. That, <laughs> I'm telling you, just watch it. That season's just bonkers. But let's go back to anger for a second. And Skaha, or Skathich. Are we mispronouncing Skathich, by the way, too? Is Someone it keeps saying it so, in the comments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so like I, I I looked it up uh, n- numerous times, and mm-hmm. I saw either... there's Some some people are saying Skathich, and some mm-hmm. people are saying Skaha. <laughs> and I'm so like, just, just I'm not it. gonna say that. That's I'm gonna say Scathage. That's the character from Scathage. 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 Guys, it's the Supreme Witch. Well, however you pronounce that name, uh, she feeds off the butcher, and then that goes and leads everything off, including Matt and Shelby, and just their relationship entirely. The, everything about them, anger. I'm in love with her, Shelby. She's the reason I came back. What? Ah! Ah! I mean, come Anger on. surrounds the entire betrayal of what started crimes of passion. Yeah, what started, you know, the entire uh, haunting of this land. And you know, when it comes to Dante's Inferno, they're actually uh, eternally sinners are eternally fighting each other on the violent river Styx. And in this case, it's literally that land in Roanoke is that mm-hmm. violent river Styx where people are just fighting over the newcomers. You know, she's always the butcher and her people are always going to kill anyone that comes onto their land. On the blood moon, of course. On the blood moon. Of course. Don't film a show there. <laughs> Why not? Don't film a show in Roanoke <laughs> on a blood moon. <laughs> what? what? You think what? people would learn by now. <sighs> that brings us to Colt. Mm-hmm. An interesting season. Yes, it is. Yes, and it <laughs> yes. is heresy, and it's the sixth circle of hell. And uh, here sin- sinners are condemned mm. to an eternity in the flaming tombs. We don't have tombs here. We have coffins, though. Oh, and we oh. have Kai Anderson, who's the, in the utter definition of chaos and condemning any sort of political thought or religious thought. Mm-hmm. And all the other cult leaders he put, portrayed that season as well. Uh, it's slam dunk. I'm just going with Kai here. Kai, 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 the whole time. Wait, are we a cult? I thought we were a political movement. All politics is a personality cult, not a heart attack. That leaves us with season eight, Apocalypse. So where does that fit into this theory? So we have got mm. two circles of hell left, right? Mm. So we've got violence and we have lust. Yes. I think that 
violence is probably just a prevalent theme throughout the entire series of American <laughs> Horror Story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And maybe it might be violence because there's just so many deaths in this season. So what do you guys think? Yeah, I think Mike, Michael Langdon is the epitome of violence. He's the Antichrist that like kills literally, uh, you know, over half the population. Yeah. So he, violence is a no brainer, but also a lot of lust involved in this season too. A little bit, but there's also, remember, no sex in the champagne room. Yeah. So, like, sex was cut sex out. Sex not like, allowed. No, no, no. But not in this bunker. I, I, you can go with violence, but again, yes, every other season is filled with it. You yeah. can make the argument, too, that a lot of people got cut out in a uh, cult more than they did in, you know, this season. So, uh, ugh, I'm a little, this is where it starts to taper off a little mm -hmm. bit for me because they're also tough to use violence and lust and put it as a whole season when that's really every season. <laughs> it's Basically. a lot to go through too. If, it, if a, one whole season is just all themes of violence the entire time, that's that's a hard watch. That was cold. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> that really was a really hard watch, you know, to, to, to put that week in and week out and that only be the thematic. Yo. Oh, that would be rough for everybody. But overall, I really think they may have skipped it for this season. I think they might have skipped the last two. Mm -hmm. Violence and Lust, I think uh, since they have season nine and 10 on the way, I think they're gonna come back to it hard with those two seasons. They might have skipped it because this really is, again, Colt part two. So who knows? All right, so season nine is next, but we also know that it's been renewed for season 10. So mm -hmm. we've got two more on the way. So they could hit both of these circles of hell. Mm -hmm. So what do we want to happen in season nine? You have a really good one that I love. Well, I'd say they go with lust for the next season. And then if everyone keeps talking aliens over and over again, mm -hmm. and all I can think of That's is me. the faculty. I if love they do, that movie. Go with aliens, keep it in the 90s, just like the faculty. And then, hey, you got your lust because you got your, they just put it in the college dorms or something like that. Yeah. So you got your horn teens and you got aliens who are working on people's reproductive systems as we know from the seasons past so perfect match there yeah come on lust. Yeah, not that everyone's works. a fan of the aliens that we saw in asylum but you and I actually enjoyed those moments yeah it, I did is a lot different from what we've seen the rest of the series it's a little I think bit the of introduction yeah. yeah the introduction <laughs> of some more of those aliens and, and what the supernatural elements I think it makes this show a lot of fun was it never mentioned again after that season, it was yeah. Never, there's no. They other should come back to it. it. So I think that now is the perfect time to it's kind of time. back. All right, so season ten. Ten's kind of a sweet spot to end a series, but do you think it will end? I have no idea, honestly. Yeah, at this point, say. I, they um, could go Simpsons route for all we know. And keep going and going keep and going, going just keep milking yeah. that. I, cow. I think as long as these actors want to keep collaborating with Ryan Murphy, and it sounds like they they love doing it. As long like, as everyone no, wants to watch it, because yeah, they're still getting no great ratings. Them. There's, they yeah. get great ratings. Everyone loves it online. We we enjoy watching it. Um, mm -hmm. It's a lot of fun, and I think that as long as he keeps that core group that are always coming back year in and year out, I think it's a no-brainer to keep on doing it. Now, this would be a really good opportunity though if they were going to stick with this theory um, to, to close kind it of out. close it out mm -hmm. in some big crossover fashion. Obviously, Apocalypse was big crossover, but this could be even bigger where we see like multiple uh -huh. actors playing multiple roles <laughs> and just like everyone just going like. I'm like mind blown of what they see on it'll screen. It'll be so hard to keep track of well, who Sarah Paulson is at any moment. <laughs> Murphy did confirm that the witches will come back. We're yeah. going to see them somehow, some way. And just thinking about season 10, it makes sense for them to have a little cameo. Also, everyone else has a little cameo as well. You get Kai Anderson. You get everything with the aliens again one last time just to bookend it. And also, they can make that violence. That can really be the final season to really kick it home for everybody. Yeah, and I think it's a very cool meta a meta idea to like have each one of these actors be kind of traveling through the gate through the circles of hell they really they, like they literally season. make it a circle yeah. of hell yeah season. it's evan peters going through each one of these in order to get out to the opposite end mm -hmm. it's it's a pretty oh. crazy idea to, to sarah paulson could be virgil or something maybe hey i just want to see what that last final shot would look like though do they make it to heaven no <laughs> that was quick maybe it's like leftovers <laughs> Okay, so let's wrap this thing up. I feel like we're all on the same page that this theory is legit. You'd be correct, yeah. Right? I, yeah. I agree. I think Murphy's going to roll with it now, even if it wasn't his idea. Mm -hmm. I think he's exactly. like, oh, that's, oh, this is really something good. I can oh, play good. with. No, now. that's a really oh, good point. Good. I think you know the creativity of like a lot of American Horror Story viewers and the fans and how passionate we are about this. I think it's one of those things where. Someone noticed this and they're like, kind of brought it to his attention. And, and he's, like, he's oh, like, that's really cool. He's like, hell yes. I've been planning this the whole time. Let's go with it. <laughs> and now he's kind of like, you know, 
molding the show around some, you know, some things that you learn from your audience. Yeah. All right, let us know what your favorite season of American Horror Story is in the comments below, and let us know what you think is going to happen in season nine and season 10, and we might use that theory for a future episode. And thank you guys for talking about American Horror Story with me today. Anytime. Mm -hmm. Good times. Of course. What's your favorite season? Murder House. Murder House? Yeah. I think mine's gonna, mine has to be Asylum. I like Coven. Witches are badass. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Every season's good, guys. There's no wrong answer. <laughs> I don't know about that. Some are better than others. <laughs> you decide. <laughs> the choice is yours. How was still that? is still. No. Oh, the stew is still. Dave, don't use this for anything. I'm just doing this for no reason. What are you having? For, what are you having for lunch today? <laughs> Not stew. Clam chowder.